Hey guys, Chris Cook in Nashville here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. I'm just going to do a quick Tuesday health vlog check in with you. So tomorrow morning, I am getting the broken teeth cut out. I'm not necessarily looking forward to that, but I am looking forward to hopefully the relief of not having blown out teeth with any associated pain or swelling or, you know, various things that I've experienced over the last, you know, few months trying to deal with it. So not super excited, but I am glad that it's going to move me forward. So this is kind of one of those things when you are on keto and carnivore and you're trying to recover from the choices of your past and the life that you used to live, right? I don't have great teeth and they are much better now. There's a lot better gum health and things going on. And the dental hygienist that uh, looked at my teeth after he's, you know, done the two cleanings and the, the different like laser irrigation, whatever thing it is they do. You know, he looked at the first side that he did when I went back and had the second side done. And he said, these are healing up great and they're really improving and things are really good and all that. And he was really, really happy. So my gum health has definitely improved and you can tell on a carnivore diet, like they go to clean things and it heals up really well and it's growing the way it should. And it's, you know, it's improving a lot. So that's really, really good. I just have some damage and some things done that are just going to require some intervention and surgical intervention specifically. So that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, early in the morning. I may or may not be posting very much for the next uh, three to four days. I already have my turkey gravy recipe video filmed from when I made the turkey, so I will be posting that for my recipe, getting you guys ready for Thanksgiving there, but that is the only recipe right now that I know for sure I'm going to post. I'll see if there's maybe some other things I can post for you guys. Just kind of depends on how all this feels, but then hopefully by the weekend and next week, uh, I should be back to fighting form and, and ready to go because things do seem to heal very quickly, especially being on a carnivore diet. So as far as weight, I am still fluctuating in about that same range, but one of these days I did see 262.1 within those fluctuations. Now that is the lowest number I've seen pop up on the scale. It fluctuated back up, but if you've watched my previous health vlogs, you may have seen in one of them or a couple of them I've talked about this. My body goes through this pattern where I fluctuate up, I fluctuate down, I fluctuate up, I fluctuate down, but it trends over time a little bit lower and a little bit lower. So when I see that number 262.1, that means it's uh, almost 123 pounds. I'm, I'm a tenth of a pound short of 123 pounds of weight loss. But when I see that the first time, I'm gonna see it and then usually it'll fluctuate back up slightly, you know, a pound or two or even up to five pounds, but then it'll fluctuate down. And when I see that number a second time, it starts to hang out around in that same area. So within a day or two, if I'm correct, and if this continues the pattern, I'll probably see that number or close to it again. That will then probably become a little more constant, and then it will probably fluctuate down again within you know a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it takes for the next kind of body shedding everything. That just seems to be how my weight loss works. So I'm really happy about that. That 262.1 is the lowest number I've seen in a very, very long time. When I break into the 250s, it's gonna be absolutely amazing because the 250s is somewhere around in there is where I was when I, when I graduated college and I started working in higher education afterwards. Somewhere in that time frame, I was in like the 240s and 250s. So it's been like a decade since I know for a fact that I've seen the 250s. Maybe there was a point in there somewhere along the way that I might have been up or down and, and been somewhere in the 250s. I don't think so. 260s and 270s, I remember being that weight back when I was, was no longer in higher education from my first time around, but I was working on trying to do music the first time and ended up moving away from Nashville and I came back. I've been heavier than that ever since. I am really excited to break through that 250 barrier. That's gonna be amazing. And when I get down to where I can break the 240s, like, man, that's gonna be super, super cool. So I'm working on getting uh, below 260 right now, shooting for that, you know, 250s, and then we'll kind of go from there and see what's going on. But, you know, I'm really, I haven't changed really anything. I'm kind of just eating 
the way I have been. Lately, I've been a little bit hungry, it seems, and so I've been eating like a little bit of something when I get home from work and then eating dinner. So I've been doing kind of a two meals but within a certain window kind of a thing and then i still have my coffee in the mornings that's been doing fine i just i kind of do intuitive eating when it comes to that kind of stuff i tend to eat one meal a day but if i'm really hungry or i wake up hungry or i'm oh i'm just itching for like some food or whatever when i get home at the end of the day it's not like i'm craving you know sugar or grains or anything i shouldn't be eating like i'm not having those kinds of problems i just get home and i'm like man I'm really hungry. I want like some meat. I want some eggs. I want some, you know, whatever. If I'm having that feeling, I go ahead and have it. Not something that I try to really restrict myself on that kind of stuff because what I find interesting is when I try to restrict things too much, it makes it to where then I start thinking about food and then I'm more likely to go back into those patterns of that old carbohydrate addiction. And I've got my carbohydrate addiction totally under control. Like I don't have an issue saying no. But that doesn't mean that it's not still there. And every now and then I get really hungry because it's like we're super busy. We're not going to eat till late that night, whatever. I get real hungry and man, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm thinking about food and things like I'll see an advertisement for like, I don't know, Taco Bell or pizza or something. And man, whatever it is that just pops in my head food wise, it may be desserts or savory things like the craving is there suddenly and it doesn't last very long but it's like, it still is there. I still remember being addicted to those foods and my brain is still like, are you sure we can't have a little bit of that just once? And when you get that kind of internal monologue going on, like I used to, well, if, if I had just this little bit, like that wouldn't be that big of a deal. I could have it and then go right back to what I was doing. And those things are not me. Those thoughts are not my brain. Those thoughts are purely that addiction trying to come back out. So understand if you ever, have had a carbohydrate addiction, if you're a carbaholic, you can be a recovered carbaholic for the rest of your life, but that probably never goes away. It's just the way our brains work. We just develop things and they just like to stay there. It's just what they do. And, and you know, that's okay. Like I don't fear it. I'm not concerned by it. I'm just, I'm aware of it, being aware of it and admitting that it exists man, that empowers you to be able to do something about it. And that is really cool. That's very, very helpful. It's really important. Always remember, if you have dealt with these things, it's okay to admit that you've dealt with these things, to admit that you've struggled with these things. Doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Doesn't mean that you're any less or that you're somehow not as good or as strong as anybody else. And if you really struggle with like, I don't know how I'd ever do carnivore because I can't imagine giving all these things up and whatever. It's okay. This, this is a proper human diet spectrum and you need to find the place where you can be stable. You need to admit the things that you struggle with and not beat yourself up for them, but just take the steps to change them. That's what I've had to do because I was really, really badly addicted to carbohydrates, not just like sugary carbohydrates. I mean, I'm talking like potatoes and bread and pasta and sauces that had carbs and processed junk and all kinds of things in it. Like I've struggled with that for years and I didn't know for years that I was struggling with it, but that's what it was. And then the binge eating as a result, it just terrible things. Like you don't get to almost 400 pounds and not have problems with your food. Like that's, that's a thing that is just a reality. Like our body when being fed properly and fed the right amounts of things because it's being nourished properly and your hunger hormones are all under control and all of that, your body does not just naturally become 400 pounds, unless you're like eight feet tall, maybe. I had to admit that I had those issues and that's what helped me take control of it and fix it. And that's why I'm trying to be here and inspire you guys and show you my journey so you realize if you struggle with any of those things, you are not alone. I am right there with you. I'm fighting every day to make sure that it's a little better than it was the day before. Even doing this, like I'm coming up on a year on the carnivore diet, no cheats, no veggies. And I have a few spices and stuff and, you know, some dairy and things like that. But like, I'm not eating veggies when I'm not on camera. I'm not eating desserts. I don't have cheat meals. Like I don't go out for pizza once a month. I don't do any of that. I don't drink any alcohol. I don't do any of it. And that is not to say that if you have those cheat meals or you've included those things, that's not to say I'm better than you. You are doing what you got to do to learn about yourself and find what stabilizes you. And, you know, I didn't do this. I didn't admit these things and I didn't figure out what worked for me at the very first. 
So when I did carnivore the first time, I went off the rails and gained a bunch of weight back. And if you fall and you struggle and you go back into carbohydrate addiction, it's okay. You can take care of yourself and you can grow from that and return back to where you were. And there's nothing wrong with falling off the wagon, knowing you fell off the wagon, figuring out why you fell off the wagon, and then having the confidence and the self-worth to get back on and try it again. So I'm coming up on a year after finally learning what was causing my issues. And I still, if I'm not careful, can find myself thinking about foods that are not good for me. It's not that I have this intense drug addicted craving that I can't say no to, that it's like I'm gonna fall off the wagon. I'm not, I'm not worried that I'm gonna have a craving and then go ahead and give in to it. I'm not concerned about that at all. I just notice that in those moments, my thoughts almost involuntarily go towards something that I don't want and that I know is not good. So I've been doing this very, very consistently for, it's gonna be a year in January. I still have those moments. So if you have those moments, if you have those cravings, don't beat yourself up. It's okay. It is part of being human. That's why my recipes are here because sometimes, even if it's not the most ideal form of carnivore for your body, because it's more dairy than you think you feel good on, too much of a, you know, trigger, as some people call it in the kitchen, you know, whatever, whatever these things are that people say, maybe that's a problem for you. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You have to decide that. But you know what? It's a lot better to have one of my carnivore pizzas and feel like, you know, that was really great. I'm going to go back to my steak and salt and water and maybe some eggs or whatever it is you do the next day. It's a lot better to do that than it is to struggle and struggle and struggle and never admit these things and be like, no, it's got to be strict. It's got to be this. I have to go from zero to a hundred overnight and I can't have anything and I can't allow myself to enjoy my food or, you know, any of this kind of stuff because you fear it. And then you end up going off the rails and you end up having a pizza or you end up going on a binge. Like you are going to deal with things in your life that are going to put pressure on you and they're gonna try to influence you and they're gonna make you want things that you shouldn't have. Have the tools, the recipes, the grace with yourself, the wherewithal and the self-awareness to be introspective enough to admit the things that you're gonna struggle with and put a plan of action in place so that if and when you find yourself struggling, you already know the solution. Think about it ahead of time. In the midst of your craving is not when you try to figure out, well, what do I do about it? The midst of your craving is when you say, this is my solution, I already know. When you're eating steak, salt, and water and you feel like you're on top of the world and everything's great, that's when you sit and you think about, okay, what would I do if a craving for hit me? How am I going to deal with that? Now, maybe that's taking a recipe that I have and making it instead of having the non-carnivore version or the non-keto version or whatever it is you're doing. Maybe that's the answer. And I think that's a great answer. And that works really well for me for certain things that it's like when I was getting back on the carnivore wagon, that's what I started doing. And that's where this kind of all came from. Maybe that's not your answer. Maybe your answer is, no, I'm start craving things. I'm going to go for a walk. I start craving things. I'm going to go do whatever. You have to figure out what your solution is but figure out your solution before you're in the midst of the darkest place. And don't beat yourself up if you end up in that dark place. And don't beat yourself up if you end up in that dark place and you feel like you fail because you fall off the wagon. None of us is perfect. I don't care who out there is telling you how easy this should be or how their steak salt water and nothing ever happens and blah, blah, blah. No one is superhuman. No one is perfect some version of what they do, I guarantee if you get critical enough and you be big enough magnifying glass, you can find something they're doing that's not perfect. And so if you look at people and you think that they're this example that's up here that is 100% perfect and never falters, there's something they falter in because we are human beings and that is just the way we are. So don't beat yourself up, find your solutions ahead of time. And if you fail, don't focus on that. Get right back on, Forgive yourself for what you did. Forgive yourself for the choice of eating whatever it was or whatever you're struggling with. Get right back to what you're doing and remember you were valuable enough, you were worth it, and that I love you and a lot of people in this community love you and we want to see you succeed because you deserve to succeed. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that's inspirational. Prayers, thoughts, everything are appreciated for my dental surgery to go well tomorrow and I'll keep you guys updated. Watch my community tab because if I can't talk very easily for a video and give you updates, I'll definitely post it. Let you guys know how it went and 
you know, hopefully it's not too bad, but hey, who knows, if I swell up like a chipmunk, maybe I'll take a goofy picture and share it with you guys or something. So I appreciate you guys being here. I thank you for watching. I've got a whole bunch more stuff coming. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and all of my links are down below if you'd like to support all the standard stuff. I just love you guys and I appreciate you being here. Get ready for some really cool stuff coming in the next few weeks. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. Eat your meat, love your life, love yourself. I'll see you in my kitchen for the next recipe.